from Fox City Stadium in Appleton, Wisconsin. It's uh, Pat Coleman and Jim Dixon. We're wrapping up the first day of the 2018 Division III Baseball World Series, the last one to be held in Appleton, Wisconsin. And it was a day in which, as happens very often on the first day of the World Series, there were some great pitching performances. There were also uh, quite a few great hitting performances. And uh, Jim and I will run those down for you, and we'll get you a look at Saturday's day two matchups here from the World Series. But first of all, general thoughts, Jim. It was a uh, it was a great day for baseball, and as many times as we have had weather delays and issues and just lots of waiting and waiting around, it was nice to have four uninterrupted games. When you said at the beginning of the day on the website that we could have four uninterrupted games, I was like, I was sure there was no way that was going to happen, but it was a great day for baseball. It was nice to see the um, rain stay away, mm -hmm. and we were only maybe an hour shy of starting the last game on time. So I know. Sometimes, uh, sometimes those games start at 10 or 11. Instead, it started at uh, 8.55, which was uh, 8.55 local time, and that was pretty impressive. And uh, of course, for those of you who don't remember, the uh, format of the Division Three World Series changed in the course of the last couple of years. Uh, uh, now instead of like a full field of eight, we have two sub brackets of four. So we'll talk about the uh, the first sub bracket or bracket one or the top bracket or bracket A. I think they call them pools here, and that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of because we already have pools in Division Three. Uh, and in the uh, first bracket, in bracket one, it was UT Tyler uh, advancing into the winners bracket along with Misericordia. UT Tyler with the win in the first game by the score of ten to five over Oswego State. Misericordia over Randolph Macon by the score of four to two. Uh, second year in a row here for Oswego State, and uh, Oswego went two and out last year, and they uh, dropped their first game here this year. Um, they really need a win to sit there for the program. Um, and one of the stories that we have this year already developing is we got a lot of men left on base. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately for Oswego, they did not leave a lot of men on base because they didn't get a lot of men on base. <laughs> no, they did not. Uh, Simon Cedillo had a uh, fantastic outing for UT Tyler. Uh, he did give up five runs. He did give up four earned runs. But you know, considering how deep UT Tyler had to go in playing uh, two games on Sunday and then two games on Monday to go win the regional, there were a lot of tired arms in that bullpen. And he made sure that none of them had to pitch today. So it was, it was the best thing that Texas Tyler could do. Um, they got a pitcher, went out there, they got a win, and they didn't have to use any arms. And they jumped out early. They scored three runs in the uh, top of the first inning, which was a, a big jump for them. Of course, Oswego came back and scored a couple right away. Uh, UT Tyler made it 4-2, Oswego 4-4, and then it was basically all Patriots the rest of the way. It really was. In the beginning, you could see the jitters. Um, teams were throwing the ball just a little wide. There are a lot of errors that don't show up in the score sheet. But it was an adventure throwing that ball around in the first couple of innings. But after um, all the jitters and all the excitement went away, they settled down to actually a pretty good baseball game. Uh, Graham Welch, uh, two for five with a uh, home run, four runs batted in. Cedillo with the win, he improves to eight and three. Uh, Donnelly with the loss falls to six and four. You know, Donnelly is a guy who is, uh, of course, the, uh, if I remember, the SUNYAC player of the year, right? And uh, is a, a guy who came in highly touted, just did not have a lot of success. And of course, his defense didn't help him either. Um, no, and Oswego did not have a very good defensive team overall. But if you look at the way they played in the last couple months, uh, once their conference started, the defense really improved. So once it got a little warmer, everything was going well. But um, they're really going to need to win tomorrow if they want to stay. It's true. Scott Landers did talk about in the post-game news conference uh, when they finally got to practice outside. And of course, that was the issue in a lot of places in Division Three baseball over the course of the spring and the late spring and the even later spring. Uh, moving on to the second game in uh, bracket number one, Misericordia advances its first ever playoff appearance, its first ever World Series appearance. They defeated Randolph-Macon, making its first World Series appearance by the score of 4-2. to two. They turned to a freshman in game one, Ian McColl, when uh, six shutout innings, uh, allowed seven hits, walked a couple, but uh, you know forced uh, Randolph Bacon to strand a lot of runners. And here's where your uh, theme of the day comes back around again. And uh, once again, we got a team leaving a dozen more. They were left 14 men on base, but in this time, they were on the losing side. Yeah, Randolph Macon uh, left 14 on. They uh, didn't scratch out any runs until the final couple of innings uh, for that uh, final 4-2 score. Colin Selby, the starter, uh, of course, uh, the ace of the Randolph Macon staff, 
Uh, gave up 11 base runners, eight hits, three walks in his seven innings of work. I only gave up three runs, and you know, usually that's enough to win if you're Randolph Macon. Um, you're going to expect that the um, Yellow Jackets are going to bring their offense tomorrow. And um, I don't know if Oswego State's going to be able to hold the Yellow Jackets off. Yeah, that'll be the elimination game, which is our first game tomorrow. The uh, winner's game, of course, in bracket number one, scheduled to start at 1.15 p.m. Central Time, features Misericordia and UT Tyler. As we move on to the second bracket, our uh, afternoon and evening games, uh, Concordia Chicago advanced past Swarthmore by the score of 9-4, to four, and then TLU with the uh, pitching performance of the day. Shuts out the College of Worcester. Shuts out the College of Worcester. <laughs> Shuts out the College of Worcester. I feel like I had to say it one more time. Just because they came into the game uh, averaging more than uh, 10 runs a game, basically statistically the top offense in Division Three. I think we'll maybe take these games out of order because I really want to talk about how good Nate Malinowski was tonight. Uh, complete game, four hits, shutout. Just an amazing performance for that young man. Um, there's a reason he's the first team All-American. Um, they've been stretching out his starts. Um, so he's had plenty of rest. And yeah. um, as the coach was talking about today, he has another year with the program, and he also has some pro prospects. So um, they're going to take it easy with um, Nate, and they're going to make sure um, that he has a future after college. Yeah, as I was looking at Malinowski's uh, usage, his stats over the course of, of the year this past week, that was what really struck me. It's basically six or seven days between starts, gets one start a weekend, is never brought in in relief. And uh, here, you know, if they get to Monday, then you're talking about coming back on two days rest. If you get to Tuesday, then coming about maybe bringing him back on three days rest. I don't know. I mean, I understand everything that coach said. For me, if I have a chance to win a national title and I have a guy who just was dominant in his first game of the series, I feel like I'm bringing him back. Um, I would not be surprised if Texas Lutheran is in the final two um, that um, they don't bring him back for at least the final game. Um, or at least keep him in a pocket because they may just need him for game number three. And of course, that is right. The champions of the two brackets meet in a three-game series, a uh, part of the uh, format I uh, neglected to mention earlier. Tyro Cauley with uh, the big stick for the Bulldogs tonight, three for five with five runs batted in, a home run and a double, and, uh, and then an RBI single to boot. Really a, a great night. And uh, you're really the, the two, three, four guys in the Texas Lutheran lineup had a fantastic night. They really did. Um, the All-American Riley Schaefer did nothing, right. um, and he didn't need to. Nope. Um, they put a lot of men on base but I really want to highlight one thing I saw today it was Chad Curtis and he had an amazing at bat it's where crazy. he sat there and he swung on and he spouted off a lot of pitches he even popped one up to the catcher and the catcher just let it drop <laughs> um, and he finally worked out a walk um, but that was um, a pretty fantastic at bat for that young man Pretty epic at bat indeed. Um, I figure it probably took about 12, 13 pitches. Uh, we don't have pitch count in the box score, and I'm not going to go back through the video because um, I'm trying to keep up with the live stats because I'm running live stats. Uh, Worcester, uh, the loss goes to Chandler Dipman. Uh, you know, they just kind of knocked him around a little bit. Uh, he gave up six runs in his four innings of work at uh, Texas Lutheran, had a, a lot of success with him. Um, we've seen a lot of pitchers come through who you expected a better performance. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, Worcester did not get it from Dittman today. Malinowski gets the win. He improves to 12-1. and one. We mentioned uh, Texas Lutheran will play Concordia Chicago in the uh, late game on Saturday, the uh, final game of the uh, four-game day. That's because uh, the Cougars, who of course were here at the World Series last year, they advanced into the winner's bracket, defeating Swarthmore by a score of 9-4. to four. Um, Jim, I really thought that this was one case today where a team really came out with uh, first game jitters, took too long to get into the flow of the game, and get comfortable because, you know, uh, Swarthmore threw the ball around a little bit in the first inning. Concordia put a three spot up right away, and that really changed the nature of the game. Um, Concordia is a team that doesn't start very well, but the coach went and he challenged his players. He says, I want you to hit them hard and hit them fast. And that's exactly what Concordia did. And it's they were pretty much, after the first inning, this game was running away. And there was little that Swarthmore could do. I'm pretty sure that Mike Stosky said in the post-game news conference that you said that they're slow starters, which no doubt is is statistically true, but he specifically said that you were the one who uh, did that, and that is why he challenged his team. When I talked to him on Thursday, I talked to their, their ability to sit there and come back. Mm -hmm. And they're known as the Cardiac Cougars for one reason, and that reason is that they never quit. And they played a full nine innings. And Coach says, I want to win 
innings seven, eight, and nine. But today, they won one through six as well. They did not have to use their stud reliever out of the bullpen. Musiak went the first seven to pick up the win. He improved to seven and two. Alex Myers finished it off with uh, two innings of relief. Uh, Ricky Conti got the start, and he was the one who really took the brunt of the blows from Concordia Chicago. He gave up eight runs on 11 hits in five and a third innings. He fell to 12 and three. Uh, not even really mentioning the offensive numbers. Uh, Brady Roberts, four for five with a couple of RBIs. Joe Silva with a, uh, a triple in the first inning. Inning, uh, part of a four RBI day. Um, that's something that Stosky pointed out. The, my favorite uh, Joe Silva at bat was uh, in the middle of the game. The uh, uh, Swarthmore pulls a, the shortstop over to the right hand side of the infield. That basically pulls a shift on Silva, who's a left handed batter. And Silva just basically mashed the ball right through the right hand side of the infield for a single. Um, it's senior leadership, senior work coming out. Um, he had a fantastic day. Um, that triple broke the bats in the backs of the team in the first inning. And certainly, if he's going to squeeze it through a drawn in infield with an extra infielder, um, you know that his luck is going today. <laughs> So to recap what's coming up on Saturday, we start in the morning with a scheduled 10 a.m. start between Oswego State and Randolph-Macon. That is an elimination game. And then we have a winner's bracket game in bracket number one between UT Tyler and Misericordia. That uh, game scheduled for a 1:15 start. A 4.30 scheduled central time start between uh, College of Worcester and Swarthmore. That is an elimination game as well. And then the winner's bracket game in bracket number two between TLU and Concordia Chicago. Jim, any final thoughts on day one from Appleton? I, th I think it was a great day. Um, we did not see um, that spectacular one nothing game, um, but we saw plenty of offense. We saw plenty of pitching. We saw plenty of good defense. We've got some good games coming up, and if you're around um, Appleton, Wisconsin, you really should be here. And if you're not, watch the uh, coverage of the Division Three Baseball World Series. Uh, we'll have links to it, of course, on d3baseball.com. What we'll also have plenty of is uh, feature stories. We have uh, one that's going on the, that will be on the website basically by the time you see this. We have a couple more in the hopper that are really interesting, uh, you know, personality profiles, player features that uh, I think you'd really want to read. We'll have uh, great photos from our friends over at d3photography.com. Uh, Jim and I and John McGraw will be running live stats. Austin Walter will be running Twitter and writing features. So we'll have have all sorts of coverage throughout the rest of the Division Three World Series. For Jim Dixon, I'm Pat Coleman, and that wraps up day one from Appleton.